Hi folks, welcome to Philosophy According to Eddie. Uh, this lesson is going to be about the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. Uh, we're going to have a look at some other ancient Greek philosophies as well throughout this, but Plato really is where it all started from. He was born in 427 and died in 347 BCE, before the Common Era, and he was a pupil of the great Socrates. Now Socrates is considered to be the uh, father of the Western style of thought. Confucius of the Eastern style of thought in the West, it was Socrates and the Socratic method. Now, Plato was the uh, prime pupil of Socrates. And in fact, um, a lot of what Socrates is said to have written um, may actually be attributed to Plato rather than to Socrates himself. So Plato is a very important thinker. He's a rationalist philosopher, um, influenced by uh, Greek uh, mathematicians and philosophers such as Pythagoras, famous for his triangles. A rationalist means that you try to um, work out knowledge logically. You don't gain it from your senses, you don't gain it from looking at the world around you, you gain it from shutting out the world around you and working it out logically. Or, the term we can use for that is a priori, like prior to experiencing the outside world. The theory being that if you were just left alone in a room without anything to see, you could still work out certain truths. Plato reckoned that um, pretty much all knowledge could be found this way. Um, pretty much all. There are some exceptions, but the general rule is all knowledge is found from within your own head. And all people have this innate knowledge. They have access to the ability to, uh, to find knowledge a priori. The example that's given is that of uh, Plato's friend Meno, whose slave boy um, was tasked by Plato to work out some geometric puzzles. And Plato, simply by asking questions, not by telling him anything, but by asking questions, managed to get Meno's slave boy to calculate uh, geom geometric lengths and areas simply by um, teasing that knowledge out of his own brain. So Plato therefore thought, this has got to be how you get knowledge. Um, and it has to be through rational thought, and all people can access it through rational thought, thinking stage by stage, within your own head. And the job of the philosopher is to expand people's understandings of this. Now, not all philosophers agree with Plato. Um, Aristotle, Plato's pupil, disagreed with him, as did another famous Greek by the name Heraclitus, but we'll come on to them. What we're going to do next, though, is have a look at the details of how Plato came to this idea and how he um, believed it affected our knowledge of reality. In order for this idea that all knowledge can be accessed from within your head, Plato had to find a way of explaining how it got there. Heraclitus, another key Greek thinker, um, believed that the world was constantly changing, i.e. Um, that things were constantly moving in a state of flux. His famous quote being uh, that a man cannot step in the same river twice. The idea being the river has changed. Now Plato uh, figures this out by saying, yes, that's true in this world. This world is a, a secondary world, an inferior world, if you like, to um, a better, perfect world of forms. Now the forms are perfect copies, a world of perfect Sorry, not copies, in fact, but they are the perfect originals of everything. So, uh, there is the perfect chair, there is the perfect tree, there is also perfect beauty, perfect love. So there are objects and concepts there. And our world of appearances, 
has got the imperfect copies of those perfect things. So the world of forms has got the perfect ones in them, but our world is made of like, almost like bad photocopies. In a sense, you can think of it as uh, you've got forms and they cast a shadow into our world. And the forms are illuminated by the best form possible, the form good. Um, there is a hierarchy of the forms, so they are, there's like a, a ranking system. Form of good at the very top, concepts like love and beauty beneath that, objects beneath that. So the form of the good shines through the forms, these perfect copies, and our world gets like sort of shadows, the reflections of those perfect copies. Um, and Plato reckons that's why, for example, we can see um, various different types of boat, and we know that they're all boats. We know this because the form of the boat, the perfect form, exists, and we can actually remember that. Now, how can we remember it? We're in the world of appearances, not in the world of forms. Ah, says Plato. This is because the soul can actually access the world of the forms. It came from the world of the forms. So when we were born, the soul travelled from the world of forms into our material bodies. Our bodies are imperfect. They are imperfect copies of the form of the perfect human. Hence all the differences. However, our souls will go back to the world of forms afterwards. Problem is, having travelled from the world of forms into our world, it's kind of forgotten the forms. Um, and so we need to use rational knowledge to remember and bring back that knowledge of the forms. And this would explain why, for example, Menno's slave boy could do geometry, in Plato's opinion. Now Plato comes up with the idea of a divided line, like a sort of a divisions between the forms and the objects, but also within them. So, starting at the bottom, we've got um, the lowest level of objects and the lowest level of thinking. And this is in the world of uh, appearances. The lowest level is images, copies of copies, because they're copies of our material goods from the world. So, form copied into our world and then copied into an image, like a picture. So a photograph of a chair is inferior to the chair itself. So those are in the world of appearances. However, if we get into the world of forms, we then get to like a higher level. We get to, uh, in terms of what we can come across, we can come across mathematical geometries uh, and proofs and formulae, rules, these are all from the world of forms because they are perfect. Mathematics is perfect. But better than that are the forms. They sit at the very top. So we go from imperfect up to perfect. In our material world, so this side of the dividing line, this line here, we've got world of forms above, world of appearances below. This side of the line, we've got forms illuminated by the form of the good, the very best form. In the material world, we've got things illuminated by the sun, by the light, which is the best that we get in our world. In terms of thinking, thinking in the world of appearances, if you don't do any rational thought, if you don't think like a philosopher, if you just kind of exist, then um, you'll believe things, you won't know them, you'll just believe stuff. Like, when it gets dark, you believe that you can't see anything, or that nothing, you might even believe that nothing exists, potentially, when you can't see it. That would be a very extreme example. But below that is imagination, thinking about things that you've seen. So Plato really doesn't go in for visuals or what you can sense. He puts all the value on what's in your head. And he calls this all opinion. You know, you don't know it, you just think it. Whereas if you get past that and start using your brain, you can understand things like maths. So if someone says uh, a mathematical formula to you, you can go, ah, I can understand that, I get it. 
But the best way is to work it out yourself. That is the very best. That's the form of the good coming through there. Because you're working it out yourself, it's completely rational, no sense data required. Not using any senses. That means you're fully using your soul's rational knowledge of the forms. Two thumbs up from Plato. This is the simile of the divided line, because it divides world forms, world appearances, but also objects and thought. Plato uses a simile as well as the simile of the divided line, is another simile, the simile of the cave, in order to illustrate the difference between the world of appearances and the world of forms, and how the two link together. Um, so when you think about the simile of the divided line, this should help to uh, illustrate it in a slightly more tangible form. Plato suggests that we imagine a cave. Entrance of the cave is at the top, up some steps. As we go down into the cave, there is a rock to which prisoners are chained. They face away from the door of the cave and they are looking at the back wall. There is a fire behind the wall and on the wall there are some objects. The fire casts its light onto the objects, and the shadows from the objects are cast onto the back wall. The prisoners can see the shadows on the back wall. This illustrates us living in our world of appearances. We are the prisoners. We are looking at the back wall of the cave. We see the reflection, so the shadows, of the objects that are illuminated by the sun. So the light from the forms passes through the forms of the objects and we see the shadows, the imperfect copies in our world. And that's the only way we can look. So this illustrates the idea of um, the form of the sun, in this sense, uh, illuminating uh, the other forms. However, the entrance of the cave, out here, this is the world of the forms that we are away from. We cannot access them. And up there we've got the sun, which is the form of good, so the ultimate form. Plato suggests, though, that as philosophers, we can escape the cave. We can break the chains through rational thought and go up into the light. Now, first, the prisoner who has escaped is blinded by the light. It's too bright, having lived in the cave all of their life. And they can only look at the shadows on the ground without looking up towards the light. And this is the idea of uh, beginning to develop rational knowledge. And using the mathematical knowledge, you're working out uh, kind of shadows of true knowledge. That would be geometry, that sort of thing, rational thinking. But eventually, the philosopher can get used to the light, look up and see the objects themselves, see the forms. And that is the idea of developing rational knowledge, reasoning it out for yourself. That is accessing the world of the forms. That's your soul accessing the world of the forms. So by being a philosopher, you can get up the steps, get out and see the real world. Now, of course, then the philosopher comes back down into the world of the caves and tells the other prisoners about what they've seen. And the other prisoners don't believe them. Um, and Plato says that they might violently repress the person who escaped and threatens uh, their knowledge of, the, uh, of what they think is their knowledge of the world. This is a reference back to the fact that Socrates, Plato's teacher, was killed because um, of his philosophical beliefs. What Plato saw is the fact he knew too much, he was too knowledgeable, the government saw him as a threat and had him executed. 
So um, there is that element too. But really what it's trying to illustrate is that through uh, rational knowledge, we can get above that divided line, we can get out the cave, into the light, and experience the true forms through our soul, using rational knowledge. Whereas the world of the senses, the world of appearances, is not reliable. And we are like prisoners to the shadows if we don't use our philosophical knowledge. Now, there are people who object to Plato's way of thinking and to his belief in a priori rational knowledge. His own pupil, Aristotle, who will be the subject of the next video, is one of them. There are other objectors. Uh, these are the empiricists or those who believe in a posteriori knowledge. Um, and the objections, if you are taught by me, you'll find them in page 24 and 25 of the textbook that we're using on the course. Um, but we will look at some of those through Aristotle, and we will weigh up ancient Greek philosophy um, later on. So, if you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.